Welcome back to another episode, episode five, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Five? Hi. Episode five of Naked Hog Podcast. Today we are going to be talking about potatoes. Uh, we have two types of potatoes we're going to be planting, red potatoes and Kennebec. These are Lesota reds and these are Kennebec whites. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be talking about how we plant them, wh when we're going to plant them, and um, kind of what we're going to do for them. Um, but first, let's uh, kind of go over what's been going on on the farm lately. How's the weather been, baby? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so <It's> we, <laughs> yeah, we have been through, uh, as most of you know, the cold fronts that ran through the U.S. and Texas is still dealing with it. Um, but came through here. Temperature got down to about 15 degrees before the day before it got down to that. Uh, we had freezing rain. We had marble-sized hail. Lots of wind. Lots of cold. Um, no snow. We didn't get any of the benefit of having well, snow. It flurried for like just a minute. Yeah. It didn't stick, but it just snowed for a brief minute, and then it was gone. Yeah. Avery was actually upset because it didn't snow. Yeah. <laughs> she did not want all the rain and freezing rain and hail. She was jealous when she saw some of the trucks driving uh, up to like Walmart and stuff that had snow on their truck. Yeah. And she's like, why didn't we get any snow? She's of the same mindset as me. She just figures if we're going to get that cold of temperatures, if we have to endure that kind of cold, we should at least get to enjoy the snow, right? <laughs> but no, we didn't. Yep, it's just we didn't. slush yep. and sleet and hail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nasty. Nasty, nasty. <laughs> so um, our plants, though, our garden surprisingly did really well mm -hmm. uh, we did not lose anything from the garden i was amazed yeah i was shocked um, i was not sure it got down to 15 degrees when i saw that it was going to get down that that low um, i actually text travis over at haas tools and i'm like hey look what's going on uh is our stuff gonna make it and he's like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um so but it did. It, everything pulled through, and I actually I attribute it to the freezing rain. I think that's what really, really helped everything. Probably. Um, so uh, I'll pop up a picture here for those of you watching the podcast. Um, but uh, our collards and our uh, well, everything, everything got coated in a, in a just. A blanket of ice. Mm -hmm. um, it rained. For those of you who don't know what freezing rain is, mm -hmm. uh, when it rains and the temperature is low enough, literally the, the the it rains water, but then the minute it hits anything, it just freezes, turns mm -hmm. to ice. So uh, the the plants were just covered in ice, and that really I think that helped insulate them from the 15 degree temperatures. And people around here are not used to that. Like we're just getting anywhere into the teens is is rare yeah. for us. So down mm -hmm. that low, as low as it got, was just kind of unheard of. And and we yeah. had power outages, you know, because of it. But uh, also yeah, that's right. We lost yeah. our power for most mm -hmm. of the day. Yeah, and then uh, all of. Uh, our chickens were uh, just kind of, you know, chickens are going to survive, you know, that. And they, you know, they walked out in a little bit. But, you know, after a while, yeah. they, they go back in. <laughs> they, went back in yep. they go back in the coop and they're yep. like, I'm done with that. But mm -hmm. our little game bird, uh, I noticed that his comb, part of it started turning black mm -hmm. and it actually got frostbit. Like, yeah, so Nickel you know, Nickel had some comb, frostbit yeah. comb. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Nickel D. Blair. Yep, yep. <laughs> So poor thing, he'll survive. But yeah. Oh, he's you know, especially his breed loves the heat. They're tropical birds. They they love the you know hotter climates, but they don't like cold. They don't do cold. No, at they all. don't. <laughs> at all. Apparently. Um, um we have a broody hen. Oh well, yeah, our, so our little Frizzle. Little frizzle she is a little uh, a little frizzle bantam chick. I think her name's actually Creamsicle. I think so. I think that's what it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but she I has gone frizzle. broody. Yeah. She's sitting on a whole bunch. She was sitting on three eggs, but then someone stuck a bunch more eggs I underneath her. Uh, so, yeah. Hmm. I got nothing. No, I'm just Yeah. <laughs> I might have, okay, I might have sneaked in like, you know, just a couple of eggs. <laughs> couple what, like six or seven? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little chicken. She, uh, she's a little chicken. She seemed like she didn't have enough. She only had like two or three eggs. She was nah, she can sit on them. That's what you told me. She's like, like yeah, she'll be able to sit like on it. them. 
She's her little, got her little this. body fluffs out more than you she think it can. <laughs> she fluffs I'll out. tell you what, she does not look happy when you get in there with her. Oh, no. You stick your hand in there by her, she looks like she's going to eat you. That sweet, nice, <laughs> snuggly little chicken she turned into a velociraptor yep, on me. Yep, she did. <laughs> was, she oh, was on. going to eat us. Wow. I was like, take the eggs, take the eggs. Goodness. <laughs> Don't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the ducks are fine, of course. They don't yep, care if it's the ducks are good. freezing rain. They don't care if they're walking on ice puddles. They just, they, they're fine. They endured mm -hmm. it just fine. Yep. And then our goats, of course, you know, fluffy fur. They had lots yeah, of Yeah, they uh, didn't care. They had lots of hay, lots of bedding. They were fine. Yeah, the goats were good to go. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, other than losing power, it really wasn't too bad. We really didn't have, it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and we did, you know, we once we lost power, I drained out all the pipes because we're in the country, so I'm able to do that. Sometimes in the city, from what I understand, a lot of the problem they're having in Texas is like in the city where they can't really drain their pipes necessarily, and yeah, it gets goes power goes yeah. out, and the water's not flowing, and they're not able to drip their pipes, and then um, they freeze in the walls, I guess is what I heard. Some mm -hmm. of their pipes were busted in the walls. That would suck. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, no, I don't want that to happen. No, thank you. Yeah, we were holding on tight to those little tomato seedlings, and we had a couple yep. of babies in the in the uh, little brooder, and we had to put them back mm -hmm. into our incubator and plug it up inside, and the incubator kept them warm in there. <laughs> yep. You know, we didn't yep. have a turner or anything, just the flat bottom incubator. Yep, we just, and just put the chicks in the incubator. Them warm and we'll safe just in there the hatching just, tray. Just yep. two days, yeah. Yep. And then, so I guess that we can talk about the tomatoes for a minute. So yep. last time, the last podcast, we talked about the varieties we're going to plant. And we talked, I think, about a little bit about the germination chamber we're going to use. Yeah. And so we did that. We took the tomatoes, we planted the seeds, we wet them down really well, wrapped them in saran wrap, mm -hmm. put them in this freezer that we had a crock pot in the bottom of, and let them germinate. And the results were actually pretty awesome. Worked out pretty well. Yeah. Huh? So we had the tomatillos germinated within two days, and then the, the majority of the rest of the tomatoes germinated within four days mm -hmm. and that's pretty incredible to me that's that's yeah. quick that's the quickest yeah. i've ever seen tomatoes germinate i don't know I like if you guys have experience with uh growing your own tomatoes from seed uh let us know in the comments what uh how long it normally takes you to germinate the seeds but yeah that was quick really quick yeah. and really good germination rates They're looking um, pretty, yeah. mm -hmm. the the worst part about it is the tomatillos because the other seeds weren't germinating yet mm -hmm. i didn't pull them out right away and i didn't realize how big the seedlings had gotten yeah. on the tomatillos so with no leggy. light they got really leggy Real and fast. so mm -hmm. on the tomatillos we did lose them next time i will know to plant the tomatillos separate from the rest of the tomatoes i did not realize that they germinated so much i didn't either yeah, i, so I much did faster. not anticipate that they popped mm -mm. up real yeah, fast way ahead of tomatoes yep. Yeah, I would even say probably within 24 hours they were starting yeah. to germinate. We just didn't see it until until a couple of days mm -hmm. had gone by. But man, oh man, that germination chamber worked. So we haven't planted the peppers yet, but that's on the list to do uh, either tomorrow or uh, the next day, over the next couple of days, get the t peppers planted. I'm aiming for tomorrow. <laughs> aiming for tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow will be a good day. Uh, but since that cold weather has left, mm -hmm. it has been just yeah gorgeous outside yeah, it's some, been nice some nice days some windy, really nice. windy sunny days and we needed them yeah. so on top of yeah on top of ice and freezing rain and cold temperatures the other problem we've been having is non-stop rain rain yes rain 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 rain, rain. 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 even this before is, the cold weather this is the wettest late winter early spring yep. i think we've had in years and it just oh yeah it just won't give us a break it'll just maybe two days mm -hmm. to, and that's not enough to dry it out down here you got to have like a whole week of dry yep. for it to finally start drying out you'll get maybe two days of dry and then it'll rain again so you're just constantly swamped and wet and you can't plant potatoes in that <laughs> you just, yeah. Uh, yeah so that leads away. us into our talk about potatoes so we have not planted obviously the potatoes yet and the reason is because it's been so wet but thankfully there is a bit of a window um, we were aiming for Valentine's Day ish mm -hmm. and it's been too wet but really we can get them in uh kind of you know good midway through march uh really yeah. and still be okay and still have time for them to grow yeah, supposedly so, there's still hope supposedly there's still a chance yep. to let it maybe stop raining long enough to get yep. these in yep. the ground and so the plan is we have two 2000 square foot beds uh, mm -hmm. we're going to take two of the 40 by 50 foot beds and we're that's what we're going to use for the potatoes 
Um, what we're going to do, hopefully, is we're going to cover them with plastic and try and keep them dry between now and the time that we get ready to plant them. And that should help, you know, we'll still have some water that drains into the bed, but that'll keep the majority of the water that just normally would rain straight down on the bed out of the bed. Right. So that should help keep those dried out a little bit more. And then we should be able to get it all tilled under. Um, the beds, we're, two beds we're going to be putting them in is we, one of them had our broccoli and lettuce in it, which man, both those did so yeah, well, so really well, good. really, yeah. really well. And then the other bed had a lot of our quick stuff in it, had our radishes that did really well this year, and then had our tatsoy. And the um, little tiny greens yep. and stuff. Yeah, yep. the tatsoy did well, uh, but it kind of, it's flowering out now. Uh, it had our beets, which I'm going to double check, but they're pretty much, uh, we didn't do so well with yeah. beets this we're year. we're going to have to try again with yeah, beets. Yeah, we'll try again with beets. Um, but, and then it had the Swiss chard in it, and the Swiss mm -hmm. chard did well, too. Um, so, yep, really, I was happy with a lot of that stuff, but that's the two beds that we're going to put it in. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it'll, I think the potatoes will do well there. Yeah. Yep. Of the beds, those beds drain the best out of our... Uh, larger beds. That's going to be the spot. Yeah. The yeah. first try spot. <laughs> so we'll be putting in, uh, I think there's 17 rows in each one of those beds. I think. Is that right? 17? So that sounds right. So 17 40 foot rows. Um, and we'll do one bed, the Kennebec Whites, and one bed, bed will be the. the Lasota Reds. I don't know why I have a hard time remembering that. Yeah, I can't remember I to save remember. my life. <laughs> I remember Kennebec real well. Now, Lasota Reds. planting potatoes. Now, there's a big debate planting potatoes. Should you plant the whole potato or should you cut it up? What do you think? Uh, my uh, great-grandpa and my papa and everybody, they always say cut it up. There's no other cut way to plant up. it other yep. than cut it up. They wouldn't do it any other way. You have to cut it up, let it heal mm -hmm. over, and plant the pieces. Now, the argument is that... If you plant the potato whole, they say that you will get a better yield from it. You'll get more potatoes. That's what they say. I don't, I've don't. i never tried it. Yep. But in talking with Travis and Greg over at Hoss Tools, they say that, that you may get more potatoes if you plant whole ones. But Size. they'll be smaller potatoes. That's the catch, huh? Size. So... I don't know that I want a bunch of little new potatoes. No, we're really going for like the I want a ones. potato. Yeah, right, we want the, you know, the real deal. Uh, so. Like I want, I want to compete with Idaho, right? Idaho potatoes. Okay. Did you know? Fun fact: If you drive in Idaho, they have a billboard. I don't know. I haven't been there in years, right? But uh, last I was there, there's a billboard when you drive into the state that says, "If you never something about it, if you're out of state mm -hmm. resident, you're not a resident of Idaho, you can stop by this." visitor center and get a free Idaho potato. What? Yeah. That is Did you know that? Did I, no. I never told you that? No, you never yeah. told me that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's still there. You know, see, but when, you, when you drive into Maine, they should give you free lobster. I know. <laughs> Stop at the visitor center for a free lobster. Right, right. Yeah, we, we, should be, we should be handing out crawfish, crawfish yeah, when you cross yeah. the Louisiana border. We should yeah. be handing Welcome out crawfish. Welcome to Louisiana. And Here's King your King. live crawfish. Here's your crawfish and king cake. <laughs> <laughs> And get some Mardi Gras beads on you, my guy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. The state troopers should just be sitting at the oh, state yeah. line just throwing Mardi Gras beads at cars. I think it'd go we, well. We've come up with a new yeah. thing, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> new thing. All right. So we are going to cut ours up. We're not going to plant them whole. Although, you know, we may do a row. No, we're going to cut them no, up. We're, we're going to cut them all up. up. So, uh, and the way we're going to do it is we're just going to make sure that... Um, that when we cut the potato that we cut it with a couple eyes on it right or a few eyes we don't want to cut it in teeny tiny pieces uh you want a few good sized chunks mm -hmm. off of it but you, big so um so we'll cut this one up just to kind of show you guys that are watching um for those of you that aren't watching you just have to use your imagination um, <laughs> but um you'll see you know we cut it yeah so you'll see the eyes right so we just cut it. Now, most of them, you can see the eyes on this thing are kind of growing out because these potatoes didn't get planted when we wanted to plant right, them. They've been sitting. But most of the time, when you go to cut them, they're going to kind of look like this side of this potato does. And you can't really necessarily visibly see anything growing out, but you're going to see these little, you're going to see little divots in the potato. Mm -hmm. And you're going right, to see where the like, eye would grow. Those little bumps and lumps, those little yeah. divots, you know. You're you gonna, can, you can, you can You're going to be able to tell that. Yeah. There's supposed to be some eyes growing out of there, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll cut this one like this. Cut that end off of it. 
And then we can probably just cut this one, you know, kind of, I don't know, there's there's an eye, there's an eye, there's mm -hmm. one, and there's one. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of cut it, you know, kind of. That yeah. looks good to me. What do you think? Yeah, right down the middle. I mean, I don't corner. know. Yeah. But it's not, it doesn't have to be specific, mm -hmm. you know. And you, you don't have to, you can cut them like this too, you know. Cut it in half like that. That's now, like Papa and Tata would always do the cut yeah. of those little half moon shapes. Yep. Right? Slice yep. it, slice it, slice it, and then cut those in half and mm -hmm. half and half. So you have like little fourths. And so the ticket with this is now you just let this sit out um, and heal over like she had mentioned. Um, it's going to have that leathery skin get on it. Yep. On the white part, it's going to like roughen over. Yeah, know, it'll like kind of dry it. up and, yeah. and look like a little bit shrivelly and it'll just heal over. And the, and the important part about letting it heal over, the reason you want to do that is because if you plant it like this, you could just go plant it like this. But the problem is it leaves it exposed to, uh, it leaves it more exposed to pests and disease and it be, encourages more things, bitters, yeah, more, more buggies. buggies to come in, get into it. And you don't want that, right? You don't want bugs. Who wants bugs in uh, and disease in their potatoes. I know I don't want fungus and, and all that good stuff in my potatoes. Bacteria, viral mm -hmm. issues, um, you know, you don't want to invite all that into your stuff. So um, that's kind of, that's what we're going to do with ours. We're going to do this. And um, if you're cutting them up, you usually you can squeeze out a five pounds in a 40 foot row is my understanding. Yep. Um, here, we're doing the red ones too, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and cut this one yeah. up too. Uh, and the red ones are the same, right? You're just going to cut it with a few eyes on it. You don't want to. You don't want it to be loaded with eyes, but you know you want it to have a few. This few just eyes reminds on it. me of my great granny sitting there cutting potatoes, yeah. and I'd always ask her, "Are we going to eat those?" She said, "No, girl, that's for planting." That's for planting. <laughs> cutting up taters. Um, and unfortunately, these taters aren't in the best shape now because they've been sitting. Unfortunately, right? But, We're going to work with what we have, though. They'll be okay. Yeah, work with what we'll we have. make it work. Let me just cut that one right like that. There we go. Boom. Look at that. Some nice planting chunks. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's a nice chunk. There you go. Cut out the bad spot, huh? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, that's kind of the basic gist of it. Um, and then we're, we're, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll plant them. Um, when we, we'll make furrows. We're gonna make a furrow. Um, obviously, we're not planting them in double rows. We'll plant them on single row, and we'll plant it every 12 inches. Huh? Make sure they can see. Yeah, I don't know, I don't if, know if the see. camera can see down that low. I don't, I don't think it can. Um, let me cut out this bad spot too. No reason to leave a bad spot in there. Mm -hmm. We can just cut it out and let it heal over. Um, so, um, really, we're gonna plant these. We'll plant these on a single row every 12 inches, and then. Uh, but when we initially make the furrow, mm -hmm. uh, I want to put, I'm going to put in the, that, uh, we got some organic uh, mm. granular fertilizer. Yeah. And so we picked it up at a big box store at Lowe's. It was on clearance and mm -hmm. they had marked it down. It was a 16 pound bag yeah. of granular uh, organic fertilizer. And it's a, I think it was 274, I think it was, is what it is, mm -hmm. 274. Uh, is the NP, NPK analysis, and that's nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, right? right? So 274, it's not a heavy duty fertilizer, it's organic, it takes a little while to break down, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll make the furrow in the bed, we'll sprinkle a good healthy dose of that in the furrow, and then we'll uh, plant these potatoes down in there, and that fertilizer will start to break down, mm -hmm. and over the life of the potato, just give it an extra boost of fertilizer. Right. By the um, time it needs that kick, it'll be good and yeah. ready for it. Yep. And and it we will still have to give it more nitrogen than that. Mm -hmm. um, so the plan is to give them uh, pretty much a couple bags. We'll have to we'll go through a couple bags of the 2020 mm -hmm. uh, on the potatoes, but just to get good production out of them. But that's not too bad. No, not to, not for sure. for the amount of potatoes that I estimate that we should get out of oh, yeah. four thousand square feet yeah. of potato space, and we're still for sure gonna give it our best try. No, no matter yep. what what it is or how much rain we got or how yep. long these have been sitting there, you know, we're just gonna give it the good old college try when it's time. Yeah, I think it'll be good. It out, I think it'll be good. Yeah, and hopefully it doesn't rain too much after we get them planted. And 
Uh, one nice thing is um, you can always just keep them healed, healed. like if it gets cold again, mm -hmm. um, if these sprout up, so when your potatoes sprout, uh, you're gonna, after they get so yay tall, you're gonna wanna, you know, uh, if maybe six, six inches or so, you're gonna wanna heal mm -hmm. them anyway, not let them, you know, we talked about letting the potatoes heal over. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about healing not the healing. potatoes. Healing. potatoes. <laughs> yeah, healing the potatoes. Uh, so basically we'll take our double wheel hoe and we'll put the plow attachment on there in the hilling configuration, mm -hmm. basically where it just covers up and we'll just mound dirt up on those uh, potato plants. You could do it with a garden rake if you don't have the wheel hoe, but it's super handy to have that. Especially if it's gonna have a cold snap or something, yep. you wanna bury those plants yeah, so with that's, lots of insulation. Exactly, yep. So that's why I kind of mentioned that. If we have another cold snap, you literally just cover them completely up and they'll just, it pop right, right back right. up. Yeah. Yep, no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a good thing. Um, and then hopefully, I don't, I mean, this is our first time growing them, so I don't know how long they'll take. But, we'll see. You know, hopefully in a few months, we'll be, or a couple months, Depends we'll be scratching how, potatoes. Depends on how vigilant they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing we didn't talk about earlier that I meant to talk about was where you went on Saturday, what you went and picked up. What'd you go pick up? Oh, so I got uh, <laughs> I got us a new uh, corn sheller. So where did you find the lady on Facebook? Yeah, on Facebook. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So he got in contact with somebody on Facebook that was uh, selling their old mm -hmm. corn sheller. It's a, um, I don't know, how, how old did she say it is? Or I don't know, but that? it's... It's just, all cast iron and, cast and, iron and, and wood. wood, and it's the real deal, old timey yeah, uh, corn shell. Yeah, big shell. too. It's, it's a big, big one. It's heavy so duty. It's heavy. Most of the corn shellers yeah. I've seen, they're always little. They're like yeah, this size, yeah, like and it's like you mount it to a table or right, something. Right. Right. And but this is like, this is like up it stands up taller than miles. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's something that you gotta like put some work behind. It's got the big yeah. wheel, the big yep. old crank wheel. It's got a, it. It's all like solid cast iron. This thing, like that wheel is probably, oh, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. dang, it's got to be a good two, maybe two feet across, mm -hmm. like two feet diameter. Oh, yeah. Like it's a, it's a big wheel. That thing's, it's going to, it's gonna push through some corn. So, so we're gonna be trying that out yep. when we grow our field corn. Yeah. We'll let you know how that goes. And what you use the corn sheller for, for those of you who don't know, uh, yeah. is um, for when you grow field corn and you're basically you're growing corn to dry and grind uh, for either grits or for cornmeal, and you have to have a way to get the corn off the cob. Yeah, it's not and, really the sweet kind of corn that you want to uh, eat fresh. Yeah, like this isn't for or, taking yeah, fresh corn off the cob. It's not for like the canning no. type of corn. You want to let this corn dry while it's yep. still on the stalk, and once it's all dried and hardened yep. and everything, then you can grind it. But, yep, so then you take it, and you take that cob of dried corn and you put it through this thing and it doesn't grind it for you like i said it just strips all the kernels off the cob it spits the cob out one end and the kernels fall through the bottom into that's a container half the work right there yeah that's the hard work yeah right and then and then we just have well i don't know i mean if we're manually grinding it I mean, <laughs> we gotta get a grinder of some sort well, too okay so. well they did half the work for you yeah so, <laughs> so we're you still get it off the cob and then you gotta grind yeah. it so we're so. still looking for a grinder a good grinder um and i'm hoping to find we'll a find stone one. grinder i don't want to and they have the metal ones that have the burrs that kind of grind, but I would really like to find something that's a, that's a stone grinder. I prefer a stone one, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. And I don't think there's any, uh, there, there's not really a lot of mills or anything around here, so uh, I don't think we're going to find any uh, old mills still in operation. But mm -hmm. um, So we're going to end up probably having to find or buy a, uh, like a newer tabletop model, but they, had, they may do make those with the stone stone grinding and not the metal burrs. All right, but, so we're halfway there. We're, yep. we're going to make it happen. Halfway yep. there. So, and the corn we're tr going to try out is this uh, Jimmy Red corn uh, that we've been seeing over in Haas Tools. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, we've seen it all over the place. It's not just Haas. It's um, but we, really Yeah, it's supposed to be really good. And it looks really good. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty. If nothing else, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty to grow. So, I'm hoping we succeed at that. <laughs> And oh, the other thing, uh, our our goats are being weaned, our baby goats. Oh yeah, so just mm -hmm. today we mm -hmm. started to try and wean the baby goats. They're not real thrilled about it though. They're not happy at all. They're not happy. No. <laughs> like not at all. About no, it. they're no, cry no, no, no. babies. Yes, they are. And we our gate 
that they were separated, the, the gate that was separating the uh, kids from the mamas is just a tad too high, big enough that they can squeeze they under. Right under. Yeah. <laughs> and two of them didn't really care. We separated them and they stayed away most of the time. But that boy, the one buckling, is a he is a little baby. mama's baby. And he just would not stay he away. Knows. He, he loves his mama. He didn't stay away for 30 seconds. <laughs> I separated him out and he instantly, he was the only one that knew how to get under the gate already. <laughs> so obviously he had been going through it anyway. Mm -hmm. So he just whoop, He's crawled had, right he under it. He's having a hard time cutting the apron straight. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hard time with that. He is. And right now we're getting about three quarters of a gallon during one milking from the two goats. So we should be getting about a gallon and a half uh, after we, it doesn't always, the math doesn't always work out like that, but in theory we yeah. should be getting about a gallon and a half after a we wean the kids. Yeah, yeah. Two milkings a day, yeah. We're good on milk for a while. Yeah, and I think that's going to lead us into cheese because mm -hmm. we're going to have more milk than we know what to do with. So we are looking to sell those two uh Yep. There goes, the doling yep. and buckling. Yep, yep. And I can't and remember if we mentioned that on the last eight, podcast eight or not. But, old, so. but yeah, we're gonna we're looking to sell. There's a, um, a doling and the buckling that mm -hmm. came from Missy, and so they're gonna be three quarters Kiko and one quarter Sonnen right. is what they are. That's their mm -hmm. breed makeup. Um, so they should be decent milkers, super hardy, yeah. and and just. You know, they have a great stocky. disposition. Well, I guess they won't be good milkers. Both, both of them won't be good milkers. The doling will be a good doling milker. Will be a good milker. The buckling yeah. will be a good dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or a buck. Uh, really well handled, yeah. And uh, they're not dehorned. Um, but nope. And the boy is not uh, castrated. Nope. Um, nope. So he could be a good potential breeder. Yep. Uh, but yeah, she's going to be a really well handled little doling. Mm -hmm. She'll make a good milker for somebody. Yep, she will. She will. And I know, I. I don't know if you guys can tell I'm fidgeting with stuff, but I do it all the time. But um, but I, the potatoes down here on the table, I keep messing with them. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just sitting here in front of me, so I keep It's like playing with little puzzle with them, pieces yeah. or something. Yep, yep, yep. I can't seem to, seem to stop messing with them. But. <laughs> and so then we've got, um, then I guess the other updates that we have that we didn't talk about at the beginning. It's funny how you, we get to talking and then we space stuff off, and then we talk about yeah. the main thing, and then at the end of the video, we're like, like oh yeah, I want yeah. to talk about this oh, yeah. and this. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, Lily put 42 duck eggs in the incubator. So she figured it was her time, her turn for yep. incubating ducks, because yep, yep. we incubated chicks, and that went really well, and we sold the batch of chicks. Avery, mm -hmm. Avery got to sell her chicks. We actually yep. swapped them for silkies. Yeah. yeah, she traded them. She already sell. She bartered. <laughs> she bartered. Yep. And so now we have beautiful silky hens, and she got rid of those mm -hmm. uh, incubated chicks. Well, Lily jumped up and said, it's my turn, my turn. Yep. So she filled our incubator with, with ducks. ducks. <laughs> yep. 42 duck eggs. 42. And she yep. hopes to sell them all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and so she's, that's why she's she's doing it to, to uh, sell them. Mm -hmm. And we may end up, this may lead us into getting a smaller cabinet style incubator. Uh, yeah. like the Kind of like the GQF Sportsman. Um, that's a really good one. Uh, that's what Jason over at Cockhill Farms uses. And he's really, really happy with it. And I'm, they I'm always have that thing going. More and more, always. I'm, more and more, I'm seeing the need for a bigger uh, incubator. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking we need to size up. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, it, it, man, I, MC's always, MC and Brooke both, because <laughs> Brooke keeps putting those, uh, I don't blame keeps putting geese, goose eggs <laughs> in there. And the MC, she, she just, she keeps putting the chicken eggs in there. And they, they keep that thing running. It's It's been cranked <laughs> up. Cranked up they since they got money's it. Money's worth Woo, of that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That, and then they have that um, uh, the little brooder thing next to it. The oh, hatching. Yeah, it, it's yeah, just full of hatching yeah. tray <laughs> type things where you just stick them in there, and then they they hatch out in there, and yeah. that's really cool. So too. one's like so, a large yeah. incubator, one's like a large brooder. So yeah. So hatching tray brooder thing. Yep. So we, I think that. That may be in our future here real soon if we keep hatching out this many eggs. And then in March, we have uh, roughly 15 of yep. our ordered chicks from a hatchery coming. Yep, yep. We ordered those from a hatchery. Special, Special ones that, that Avery wanted, and we may have added a few to the order, too. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> oh, that one looks pretty. 
one or like two that. of those, you know. Why not have the biggest uh, <laughs> breed of chicken in the world? Yeah, you know, Avery wanted Brahmas. Yeah. yeah, Avery wanted Brahmas. That the should be interesting. The ones with some crazy looking hair and fluffs on their to, head. I'm going to have to there. enlarge the, the chicken door for the thing to get in and out. It'll get stuck. It's going to be able to open the handle on the door, the main door to the coop. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just go in the big door. The people door. <laughs> Um, all right. On that note, guys, that's going to wrap things up for this uh, this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't checked out our main channel, uh, check that out. And we will catch you guys in the next episode.